represent it ultimately in C. All right. So what motivated you to make this sort of the, the ultimate challenge in C? This is right around the point where we, we say goodbye to C and we transition to another language. What motivated this as the, as the end point? You know, that's a good question. It's been so many years that I'm not sure I could put my finger on the one reason. But what I do really like about this portion of the class and this problem set wherein students have to implement the fastest spell checker possible by implementing a dictionary according to an API that we give them, a set of four functions they need to fill in the blanks for, is that it's a really open-ended opportunity to design something. And we do give them a menu of sorts. We encourage them to do a hash table or a try, or barring that, even a linked list or an array, albeit uh, less compelling than the more sophisticated and efficient of the data structures. And it's nice because students reach this decision point where they have to decide non-trivially, are you going to go down this road and commit to it, or go down this road and commit to it? And I would say many students Maybe many students find the hash table a little easier. We do give them a decent amount of linked list sample code that they can weave into it. Um, but a try is also a nice challenge for students. And it's not all that hard. It's just a little more difficult to think about, perhaps, because in each of your node, you have an array. So it's an amalgam of even more things. Um, but it's great fun, too, because we have the so-called big board, wherein students are invited to um, challenge each other, literally, with a script called challenge and benchmark their code in terms of how much RAM they're using and how many CPU cycles in order to spell check big files. Yeah, for my own uh, students, I usually set um, a beatable time. And I, I have special prizes for anybody who can get ahead of my time on the big board, yes, really trying I, to get I them to think about design. Post a code that I know to be very slow, knowing that I'll get beat <laughs> by the best of our brightest students. Yeah, I'm not saying that I. Uh, I'm not sandbagging. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I I iterate. I'm not CS50's own Rob Boat, and I can't get to the top of the uh, the big board. The top of the big board. Well, what's fun too about this assignment and this gamification, if you will, and it's opt-in. Students don't have to, of course, post their code or the results publicly mm -hmm. if they don't want. Um, but we do encourage them that even if you're at the bottom of the big board, hey, you made it. That means your code's correct, and you can, there's only, nowhere to go but up from there. Right. But we've had fun anecdotes of students who, you know, uh, one student will be just below, uh, just above his or her roommate. They go to dinner, they come back, and oh my god, the roommate now bested me. And it sort of motivates students to put in even more time and more thought into the design of their program so that they can kind of inch back above whoever it is they're playfully competing against. Yeah, it's probably the problem set where we see the most multiple submissions. Yeah, uh, that's students, true. Actually, that's true. I, I've always been the kind of person who found hash tables to be more intuitive, but I know many of my students actually think that uh, tries are more intuitive. I think I've always gotten tripped up by yeah. by tries. Yeah, I think that it's it's a lot of pointers, and so I always I do appreciate when a student is willing to throw him or herself into the challenge of of having to manage so many pointers. Um, we do tend to find that. The tries underperform. In fact, my my implementation is a try, and there's actually some non-trivial memory effects. You just waste so much memory with a try, you then suffer from cache misses underneath the hood that we don't discuss this to this level of detail in CS50. So in reality, a hash table with a good hash function, which students are welcome to go find online if they'd like, so as to just use that as a building block or a black box, um, seems to historically best uh, most other implementations in this in this challenge. And that's actually something that we can show them on the big board, too, because in addition to showing them their runtime, we actually show them how much RAM their data structure consumes. Yes. And you can usually tell by looking Infer, who implemented yeah. a hash table and who implemented a try. Indeed. It's a lot of fun. And what I'm so proud of, honestly, is when students who, as you say, um, as you've long said, who just six, seven weeks prior had never programmed before, or they were just understanding how binary works, they're implementing a, a hash table, a try, pretty sophisticated data structures. Mm -hmm. And this is atypical. I mean, we always say that CS50 is, is an amalgam of sorts of what most universities call CS1 and CS2. And this really is the CS2 side of things. Just seven, eight weeks into the semester, students are implementing data structures in CS50 that they might not otherwise um, encounter for another term or two, more traditionally. Yeah, we, we certainly message, and I certainly hope that uh, students who who complete problem set five, the misspellings problem set, really feel a sense of accomplishment. It is a yeah. it is a really big task, and uh, it's always very gratifying to see students you know light up in office hours when their spell checker mm -hmm. is finally 
uh, matching the staff solution. I think there's some relief. And I mean, seriously, like when you get to like Python just a week or two later, it's, it's just magical how you can then whittle down this entire concept of a hash table or a try to just a single line of code and instantiating a, a dictionary in Python or a similar data structure and associated array in other languages mm -hmm. or an object in JavaScript. You just get these things for free. But what's key is that students understand them going into them. They're not just taking for, uh, for granted that these constructs exist. Right. It gives them some, such an appreciation for, for what, what is under the hood. And for those wondering uh, what those milk cartons are doing on stage, also uh, discovered in the nearby dining hall. Uh, but it's a nice way, I think, of That's representing like our major prop <laughs> hash, uh, hash buckets. Uh, you'll see that we cut some corners here. Uh, we don't try to carry off uh, 26 of those. We just do A, B, C, dot, 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 Z. Um, but, and then I'm using, I think, blue books, for instance, that you might have for examination periods where students might have their names on them. So it's a way of, and you can use most anything for this, but it's a way of very physically and demonstratively showing how you could hash on uh, alphabetic values and toss them into the appropriate And we actually do that ourselves behind the scenes when we had, up until last year when we were doing all of our quizzes on, on paper, we would actually, when we finished grading them, we would hash them by the TF's name to more quickly. Uh, Indeed, lesson out. learned. And one of my favorite photos, actually, and, and things that happened in reality was that one of our our first CS50 hackathons years ago um, did one of the TFs just completely on their own decide to write a, 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 a poster that just says hash yourselves and there were like three lines for checking into the event like A through L and M through whatever and so forth and so it was kind of a playful like kind of geeky thing to, to message with.